Ducati Scrambler is the essence of motorcycling and a world filled with freedom, joy and self-expression. Well that's what Ducati have got to say about the bike, but what have I got to say? This is one of many bikes now that are in this modern, retro, classic style bike. You know, Kawasaki are having a go at it, Suzuki, Triumph have been doing it for years and they're really doing it quite well with their Scramblers and Bonnevilles and Bobbers and so on. So Ducati came a little bit late to the market, around 2015, 2016 or so with, with this, the Scrambler Full Throttle. And they really seem to have got it right. It's very simple, basic. There's no riding modes, it's just an engine, wheels, handlebars, and that's about it. So it's a really slim down, cut down, sleek, simple bike. And it really seems to work. Nearly one in four of their bikes sold around 2017, 2018, and probably more, was a Ducati Scrambler and one of the variants. So they've got the recipe really spot on. But part of that as well is probably their marketing strategy. You can buy t-shirts and jackets and boots and gloves and toys and they've even got their own radio station. It's like a brand within a brand is how they've gone with this bike. And they've not gone just to one type of it. They've got the off-roader with the desert sled and they've got a 400 as well so you can get it on an A2 license. They're ticking all the boxes. So what do you get for your money? Well, there's not a huge amount. There's no bells and whistles on this bike, as you may get with some other ones. The fuel gauge, for example, is non-existent on the little dash that you do get. There is, however, a fuel light. The suspension, well, it's not adjustable, apart from at the rear end, where it's preload adjustable. Apart from that, there's nothing else, so don't get your hopes up if you're used to twiddling with superbike forks. Let's stay on that about the rear shock. That's where this bike is let down just a little bit. Realistically, if you're only riding it, just you, or you're gonna to go touring with just a little bag strapped on the back, you probably won't find any problems. But if you're north of 100 kilos and you're taking a pillion, you're gonna find it's a little bit limited. Particularly with this bike where we've got the tail tidy fitted, if you go two up, we have found that you can get the number plate touching on the rear tire and it wears the number plate away. So something to watch out for. And if you're gonna be riding it two up, definitely make sure you budget for a spring. The engine, that's not high tech either. You can trace the history of this motor well over 40 years and it's most notable in the Ducati Monster range. Now, it might be air cooled and just two valves per cylinder, but actually it's no bad thing because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It does produce 73 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when the bike only weighs 170 kilos dry, it shifts it along plenty well enough. So with that said, what is this bike like to ride? Well, it may have Scrambler in its name, but its off-road ability is really limited. At the seat and the tank, it's too narrow to grab with your knees while you're stood up, and whilst when you are stood up, it's a good position, it's just not really natural. You don't get a good feel of the bike. The big chunky tires, well, they're just for show. They don't actually offer any ability, bar a little bit of a gravel track. The suspension, it's not too bad on the road, but gets overwhelmed really quickly if you do try and take it off-road. But let's be fair, if you're judging this bike on its off-road ability, then it's a bit like judging a stiletto in its ability to go hiking. It's just not what it was designed for. The engine is really the star of the show with this bike. It might only rev to around about 8,000 RPM or so, but actually it gives you the power where you really need it. You get a good slug of torque around about three, 4,000 RPM, which is perfect whether you're on an A road and you're doing some overtaking, or if you're blasting between corners on a B road. It just gives you what you need when you need it. And honestly, it's really playful the way the motor is. And coupled with this, we've got the optional extra Terminoni exhaust. It's so much fun. You get all these barks and growls and a little rasp on the overrun. It's just fantastic. And like I say, playful. It makes you want to ride it. And actually, while we were kind of slating the suspension slightly on its ability to go off-road, on the road, it's perfectly adequate. And like I say, if you're solo riding, it's really good fun. Where it excels is if the surface is a little bit broken up, but not too lumpy and bumpy, that's where it's perfect. 
on smoother tarmac, it, you can start to push it on a little bit hard and it, it's not great. It's not too soggy, but it's just really good fun on a nice flowing road, a little bit of broken tarmac, like I say, coupled with that engine and it's just really good fun. However, the brakes, whilst they're pretty good, it is only a single brake disc and a single brake caliper on the front. Because of that, the brakes might not be quite as sharp as what you're used to. Now, don't get me wrong, they still do a brilliant job and coupled with ABS, it's plenty. But it just means that if you're slowing from a reasonable speed, say 50 to 60 miles an hour, you might be giving it a bit more of a handful than you're used to, or even chucking an extra finger on there and squeezing it a little bit further towards the bar. It gives you plenty of feel and there's no problems, but just something to be aware of if you are used to something with two calipers, two discs at the front. Truthfully, this bike is actually a fantastic bike for the road. I mean, it looks brilliant, it sounds brilliant, it's great fun to ride, and yes, the rear shock does let it down a little bit and you can't really take it off-road, but let's be honest, you're probably not going to. There's a little thing that I don't like about this, and it is only minor, other than the rear shock, and it's the flasher switch or the switch for putting your main beams on. I just find that I do catch it every now and then and I only realise when I notice there's a blue light on the dash. So it is a little bit frustrating, just be aware, keep an eye on it. But overall, like I say, this bike, it's a fantastic entry level into Ducati ownership. I mean, these only cost you around about five grand now, which considering a brand new one is north of 10 grand and you can spec one to above 15, it represents brilliant value for money. If you're one of these naysayers or you've got doubts about Ducati or even Italian bike reliability, then go and check out a gent called Henry Crew. And if you don't know who he is, he's one of the youngest people ever to ride around the world and he used a Ducati Scrambler. So if it can take him around the world, it can take you to your local coffee shop and back. Thank you very much for watching. Ride safe.